Hello Tubesters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, today, as the title will suggest, we're going to look at Airfix's 1 in 600 scale HMS Devonshire, a county class destroyer. Uh, when was Devonshire done, Gav? Oh, done. Com uh, started building around 63, something like that. Uh, I'm supposed to be getting HMS Fearless, also in the vintage classics range. Uh, as I explained on a, on another video, uh, however, <laughs> in looking, I was constantly still looking for some Type Twenty Ones. Anyway, or the Airfix Leander, uh, which I can't get, and uh, somebody was selling this off for a tenner. Uh, a model shop. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, or I don't know if it's bricks and mortar or, or whatever. But a, 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 what I would call a proper seller, rather than say me selling things off. Actually, I am a proper seller because I sell painted figures. Should you need any, <laughs> but not, but but I, you know what I mean. I'm somebody not selling off the stash anyway, and uh, um, it's been going for I was it, uh, 14, 15 quid plus three fifty to five fifty postage. I was definitely getting a Devonshire, um, not to make Devonshire. To be honest with you, uh, I wanted to make uh, Antrim or Glamorgan. Uh, I've decided I would go with HMS Antrim as most people tend to make HMS Glamorgan. Uh, reason being both those sister ships went to the Falklands uh, in the war and uh, Glamorgan was, was heavily hit with uh, a lot of casualties uh, from an Exocet launched by, from land and uh, Antrim was hit by a 500, uh, no, a thousand pound bomb that went through her sea slug which is a, I'll show you in a bit, which is a anti-aircraft missile went through her sea slug magazines and went through the other side and she was also hit by several 20-30 calibre um, rounds as the I don't know if it was the same jet uh, but when it went over um, but I've fancy doing Antrim uh, and I'll probably do Glamorgan at some stage but I fancy doing Antrim because she got about um, she she was the HQ ship uh, for the task force that liberated South Georgia or retook South Georgia, whatever you want it, which is an island further south, southeast, southwest, I don't remember, further down uh, than the Falkland Islands, uh, not normally inhabited apart from science, a few scientists uh, and there were a couple of ladies uh, from the British Antarctic Survey Unit on the other side of the island at the time. Uh, there was an old Norwegian uh, it's British island, but it was a Norwegian, mainly Norwegian uh, at Spitsbergen. Spitsbergen, I believe. Ah, oh, my head, I get it all mixed up. But anyway, uh, the, the the whole start of the Falklands War was over scrap metal. Guys had, uh, were starting to illeg illegally dismantle all the old whaling station there. And... Uh, more or less that start that they was and they'd also put them on fuel and the South Sandra Trials, which was the British possessions, uh, even closer to uh, um, the ice fields and, and whatever. Um, again, uninhabited apart from maybe the odd scientists, but uh, the Argentines had been putting more or less stake, putting guys on to say, "Hey, we're here now," type of thing. And uh, there was a, a Royal Marine commandos really did themselves proud on South Georgia. A platoon wrecked an Argent, not, not completely wrecked it, but literally beat the crap out of an Argentine corvette that was stupid enough to come too close in, in, inland. And they hit him with everything the platoon had got and literally just <laughs> sent it off, staggering off, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, Dem Antrim went down south and, uh, and uh, with the task, a small task group. Uh, she also, her Wessex helicopter um, picked up 16 SAS guys and um, two whole crews of two other Wessex helicopters. Uh, what happened is there's a glacier called Fort Fortuna Glacier up there and uh, the, the weather was horrific. We're talking snow, ice, I mean it's a big old craggy island, uh, um, South Georgia. And um, they were trying to take this, it was just too fierce for, even for the SAS. And they've tried to get the SAS off the, off the this Fortuna Glacier and the first Wessex went in, crumpled up. Luckily the crew survived 
uh, another Wessex was sent out to obviously get them all off. That too, just through weather conditions, boom, went, went into the, uh, the and uh, all that crew survived as well. And it was Humphrey, uh, Humphrey off, uh, I think they're all called Humphreys in the Navy, uh, the Wessex Mark 3s and 5s. Uh, and uh, the, the the Wessex off the Antrim uh, managed to the the crew. How the hell they did it, I don't know. How the hell they didn't go into Fort Union Glacier, I don't know. But they they got everybody off. Uh, brilliant. So she's got a real story to tell the Antrim. And uh, she then went on obviously to San Carlos Water, uh, where we lost so many uh, ships and got uh, so many ships damaged. Uh, covering the landings or whatever um, and that's when she picked up the thousand pound that went through the sea slug uh, magazine so there you go uh, so it won't, she won't be HMS Devonshire I'll go through that in a minute she'll be HMS Antrim when I get round to doing it uh, I have got to I'm going to have to get uh, I think Starling Models do the aftermarket they do a, a sea slug probably uh, maybe sea cat uh, as well um, they do a, a like a package of, of resin and uh, they do a photo at sheet I believe unless it's uh, Peter Atlantic models or that I'm not sure anyway they it's it's there but it's going to cost money but which is why I was also going to go down the fearless route because I only have to buy one set of photo etch for that and then make the rest out of plastic card uh, there's no point in me trying to make a sea slug launch it'll look just all rubbish <laughs> so, so um there's some cost involved in that so when I start on Antrim I'm not sure we'll cross that bridge when we come to it the wife's off to Australia on holiday for three whole weeks who's getting the holiday hmm. uh, uh, and you never know Fearless might get <laughs> slipped in while she's away <laughs> she doesn't know about this one it's supposed to be on an embargo but I did tell her figures and ships would still be bought if I had found a ship at the right price. I've probably saved myself with a postage eight or nine quid on, on this one. Don't tell me you've got them cheaper and free postage. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> right, let's go down and take a look at uh, unboxing HMS Devonshire. Uh, just before I start, I should have said, uh, let's have a quick look at the the, the box art. Um, I, I'm not gonna put my larger tripod up uh, because it's for what it is, it's it's gonna there's gonna be hardly anything in the box when I open it. Uh, so as you can see, she's got both the turrets. I believe she kept those on uh, her entire service life. You can tell it's a bit slightly earlier as well. Um, the uh, Humphrey, the Wessex at the back, is the the older style with the yellow top rather than the is it Oxford blue they painted it. You see, she's launching a sea slug. Uh, the sea slugs down there on the uh, <laughs> aft. I don't know, uh, this piece here, is, there's a huge launcher, oh it's massive, huge, huge framework and that missile really is that big and uh, the missile itself is slightly somewhere in the middle uh, and these are all the boosters, I believe later ones had four boosters and they were, well they all had four boosters I think but they were moved up or down the missile but it was designed the sea slug to hit high flying Soviet bombers um, it was only fired uh, once at an aerial target in anger and uh, the way these are locked on they didn't have their own homing as I believe people again with my busted head I can't can, uh, facts don't always stay in my head very long uh, they don't seek the target themselves they are directed on by a uh, by the radar beam so the ship will, will be tracking it and the missile will follow that beam to its target. Now the only time this was actually launched against land targets was by Antrim and she, uh, land targets, air targets, uh, she was, uh, so she wasn't, it wasn't really doing its job to, to hit a high flying target. Obviously the Argentines were coming sea skimming literally wave top height to try and keep out of our rate of all our like sea darts and whatever and sea cats. Um, missiles and obviously even our, our smaller um, you know uh, weaponry uh, if they could get away with it and uh, they fired this at a dagger jet which is like an Israeli, uh, Israeli version of the Mirage uh, that they bought off Israel uh, through the Argentinians and it, it wasn't locked on 
by the the raid the radar. Uh, they fired it mainly to see if they could put the pilot off. Um, so that's why that one was discharged, and it, it, it obviously never hit the target because it, it was never even locked on. Uh, but the pilot would have seen a big boom. I mean, these things literally. I mean, that smoke don't do it justice when, when it uh, when it lights up. Uh, so uh, only once was it fired on, on a, a at an actual aerial, uh, a real aerial target, and that was that dagger jet down in the Falklands, because uh, these were the only two that were fitted with sea slug uh, down there, I believe. Uh, however, a sister ship Glamorgan fired. Um, was it four, five? I'm not sure. Uh, at Port Stanley Airfield uh, and she was supposed to have destroyed several helicopters I believe on, on the ground as well as radar units so she was literally used them as, a, as mobile artillery really uh, they also I believe fired one or two off um, when she herself was hit by the Exocet uh, just to try and get them off before because the Exocet hit uh, I was going to say uh, that if you're wondering where Humphrey fits into this little box here, he doesn't. He comes down the side here, and we'll see in a minute. There's a they actually open up at the side, and uh, with HMS Glamorgan, the officer of the watch, I believe. I keep saying believe because I've got to be careful. I read all this all the time, but I, I can't keep writing it down word for word. It'll we'll never get anywhere. Uh, but he healed the ship over. Uh, to obviously present a smaller target to the, the Exocet because the Exocets have been la launched by uh, from land off the back of a they literally strapped into the launches to the back of a flatbed lorry and uh, and launched them or a trailer uh, and obviously they couldn't pick them up I don't think launch from land with all the land clutter uh, they only literally picked them up at the last minute and as he because he was so he did the the right thing he'll you know try to get the ship away to turn away from it it actually brought the ship was it up I believe and and the actual exocet hit somewhere around here and then before going off into the into the uh, uh, hangar bay and there was a lot of uh, unfortunately a lot of uh, matlows were killed in there and I believe is it in the uh, galley below um, I, I, I please, you know, any veterans out there, forgive me if I've got that wrong. Um, as I say, I've got head problems and I can't always remember stuff. But uh, basically, that if 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 he hadn't done that, and the the the, the Exocet would have hit lower down, we'd have been in real real trouble. As it was, some brave lads died. Uh, always remember that. Uh, As I say, we're here today because other people put their lives on the line for us. Um, in whatever, in you know, whatever conflicts. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's that story anyway. So I just want to show you roughly uh, the artwork. <laughs> As usual for Airfix, uh, one bag, everything thrown in. Uh, I don't think they're going to do much damage in there. <laughs> Pits might fall off. There's not a lot to fall off the sprues. This was, I think, originally tooled in 63. So uh, don't expect a lot. Right, guys, I've literally just slid this onto the uh, onto the black card uh, just so I can pick up any bits that have fallen off, if any at all have. So two sprues, they've been sliding around and all, the, all that good stuff. Uh, you get a stand if you want a stand. I'll be putting mine in the water uh, when it comes to it. They'll, they'll be scuffing and bits of there's some light bits of flash. Uh, as I say, this is an old old tooling, and as Airfix are really good to do, uh, they put it on the side that it's their what can I call it? Vintage classics. That's it. Um, we've got our two turrets. Very basic. Everything's going to be basic on this. The idea for, for me is is to basically get this is is to get this is to get a whole shape. Uh, and then work from there really with with uh, I mean we can see an extremely basic Wessex you could go with that I'll probably get one of the uh, one of the upgrades in the upgrade set they do a Wessex with it um, so there'll be a lot of carving with this I mean I'll take it to these should be yeah I won't knock around with them too much uh, that'll be a funnel capping I'd imagine 
as I say, everything is extremely basic. These are our, what they call our ship's ladders. Uh, again, I'm not knocking Airfix for this. That's why we're, we're looking at a 60, 63, something like that tooling. So um, if you're doing a ship, a lot of guys get the kicks out of doing the Air, Airfix classic aircraft or even their little tanks uh, because it's nostalgia. And sometimes just because the subjects you, you can't get, especially like the aircraft, they do, so, they, they do some some nice subjects, you know, and if you're prepared to put a bit of work into them, you can either build them as is, you know, just as the a nostalgia build, uh, or you can put some time into it, you know, and, and really change them around, which is what I like with the ships, you know. I, I can't get this as a mod. I'm never going to get one of these as a modern ship. If you get, you know, modern tooling or whatever, never, I, never are they going to do one of these. Um, so what choice do you have I, I'm not good enough to scratch build this so it, it, it's a case of you know crack on with what we've got and that's what I intend to do with this so I'm going to be not I won't slate anything on this because it's uh, it is what it is you know it's of its age uh, I mean if you look at that Sea King air, air fixer done that's blooming fantastic that is so uh, you know things move on so here's our radar mast. I apologise if you can hear the bloke next door. As I make a video, he decides to get back on his sander again. I uh, worries me sick when he goes on uh, power tools. I'll keep expecting like a like a, a masonry bit to come flying through the wall at us at any stage. Um, so yeah, you know, it is what it is. Oh, thank you very much. Just in the middle of a video. Uh, ships, boats, uh, giant sink marks in them all, uh, flash all over the place, but again, it is what it is, we'll work around that. Um, I think they'll clean up quite well, we've got a smaller mass there. Uh, as I say, there'll be a hell of that's our right, top of our radar. I mean, that bears no resemblance to the radar. Uh, oh well. I'm just trying to find actually on here. Let me look again. Where's the sea slug? Or their idea of a sea slug. I presume there's a sea slug on here somewhere, type of. It's a giant gravy framework. So, their boats, their boats, Davits. Hmm. No idea. I suppose it'll look. We'll have a look in the instructions in a minute. See where our are. In fact, we'll have a look at them now because there's not a lot to show you. Uh, I believe they're the barrels for the guns. Oh, I've almost taken off uh, whatever that's supposed to be. Right, uh, let's have a look. Uh, what you will get obviously with the more modern versions rather than buying a, a very expensive 30 40 pound you know original kit from the 70s or 80s some very nice uh, decals upside down gaff thank you very much i'd probably use some of these oh, i imagine they i don't it doesn't say cartograph but i imagine they would be as that seems to be where airfix source most of their decals from but they look nice as far as they go but I'll probably have obviously for and trim I'll have to get some aftermarket which uh, I should be able to get from either Atlantic models or Starling models probably Starling as they tend to do the, the smaller scale uh, this is where I can't really show you any without I haven't got my uh, larger tripod. Uh, colour guides. Uh, I don't know going down south if they still had the wood or if it was still unpainted or whatever, but that's a wooden deck harking back to the old days uh, from there to, to obviously there. And then we've got like it was a green non slip uh, type of pattern. Uh, we've got Humphrey up there. Um, 
So those couple of blobs of plastic, I believe, were meant to be the sea slug. Now, as far as I've seen, sea slugs are giant, massive framework. So uh, I think that's a, a real, uh, a real um, simplification. Which again, we're talking 63. Not surprising. And these are our steps, as you would have think. Not a lot going on. So if you're going to just make this out of the box, just for a bit of fun, uh, they are the steps. Yeah, the bit that I nearly knocked off is supposed to be the sea slug. Have sea cat on the back as well. I thought she carried sea cat as well. Well, we'll find out. So there's the uh, radar for the uh, for the sea slug. So, as I say, um, I'll leave this up just to finish talking. Uh, mine's going to be HMS Antrim. Uh, it's going to look a hell of a lot different from from this. If you want to tart her up a bit, put some ship's railings on without doing any heightening, shortening, lengthening, all that stuff uh, or, or buying expensive um, you know, sea slug launchers and stuff like that you could just get some brass ship uh, <laughs> so that again, a bit slowly more uh, Gav uh, ships railings, that was YouTube some ships railings, uh, photo etch, you could get those uh, from I've got to be careful, I'm not, we'll just say both companies again because I'm not sure which, I've got no connection to either which is uh, Atlantic models or um, or Starling models, but uh, you could just put some ship's railings on just to make a uh, you know I I, I would I, I like seeing my ship's railings on. Right, guys, before this bloke wrecks much more of this video, I've got tinnitus. You probably have by now, um, so uh, <laughs> I'll wrap this one up. I'll let him carry on with his sanding. I'll shove it up his left nostril the way he's going. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll catch up. We'll catch up soon with this one. Uh, well, soon, soon. At some stage, we'll catch up with this one. I just wanted to get it for the price. You know, at ten pound. Uh, you know, that's what I'd hope to pay. To be honest with you, <laughs> because I'm going to get much less than that uh, unless it's from a charity shop, and even they tend to know the prices these days. But a, a tenner that gives me a fighting chance with buying the extra bits I'd want to to build her up, so I can make her a Falklands. 1982 HMS Antrim uh, or Glamorgan uh, uh, hopefully I'll get another one at some stage and uh, do both of them so uh, thank you very much for stopping by and taking a look uh, the little Type 21 uh, that I'm scratch building all the hull uh, it, she's quite banana shaped at the moment I don't know what went wrong there but we're still going on with it uh, did some filling and sanding last night uh, there'll be a video up on HMS Kent Probably Monday because I want to do a Napoleonic. The last I've done the last 40 millimeter uh, Napoleonic guy. Just got to put some uh, tufts uh, around the base that I've done. So uh, uh, I'll give you a show and tell of him the weekend. Uh, um, and as I say, HMS Kent probably Monday or Tuesday. But all the railings are done on Kent. They're all painted from stem to stern, port to starboard. Oh, we're getting there. I'm remembering the nauticals now. Uh, uh, decals are on. I'm, I'm just saying whether I had a couple more of the yellow and black stripy ones around the uh, thirty millimeter guns, but we'll, we'll cross that when we come to. It. Uh, so we'll do some weathering with her over the weekend, and um, you know she'll be uh, she'll be ready for a, a video, uh, and then we've got to go on the next stage. On her will be the sticking her to a base, which I probably will do first. I'm then going to find how much it's going to charge me to get me some crew because uh, I want to put some crew on and then I've got to do the antenna which will be the really complicated bit because I'm not very good at that and they'll be snapping and all the rest of it but I'm going to make a whole host of antenna rigging up for her as well uh, so we're nearly there we're nearly there with Kent She's, uh, she'll finally be and I'm also going to try and save some pennies and get a case for her as well um, not perfect by any means uh, you know big huge gaps I think Paul's saying he's sorting his out by extra sanding of the decks and that I didn't know my bum from my elbow to be honest with you so I just did what I thought I could do but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that build apart from the gaps uh, around the 
the, the ship itself. Well, we live and learn. So look after yourselves. Oh, and the Jeep, the Jeep will get done next week as well. If not, I might put some time for the weekend if I can. So look after yourselves. Uh, there'll be some more Napoleonic. I've got a Napoleonic Epic 13 millimeter unit to show you uh, early on in the week before they go up for sale. Finally finished those. That's the Royal Scots. Uh, I'm painting uh, light infantry at the moment in epic scale because I've got a few sprues to finish off and they are because they're all green and black they're almost done um, so they're almost done uh, and then I depending on what sells hopefully the 40 mils sell uh, should you want them they're going at 40 pound each those 40 millimeters uh, and uh, the the epic have got to sell as well if they do that will fund uh, maybe some 40 mils if there's an interest in them uh, as in for sale uh, and I want to get a Perry Metals uh, unit of some description of Napoleonics uh, and, and go back to painting an entire unit of, of Napoleonics so look after yourselves uh, we're still all at sea I hope you've got your seasick tablets and uh, I'll get sick running a cold water and um, and yeah we'll catch each other soon on another video